Good morning, uh, viewers and uh, listeners of Concerned Citizens Media. Uh, welcome back again. Uh, nice to have you here. So, as usual, I have some uh, uh, news to read. Uh, at the first, then uh, I have some video uh, to share with you. So let's get started. Here are the news and the concerned citizens media comment for March 22, uh, 2021. Uh, Wallo Oromos cries for help. They are under attack. According to the reports coming out of the special Oromia zone in Wollo, Wollo Oromos are under heavy attacks from well-armed Amara special forces. The Amaras are attempting to wipe out the Oromos from their homes and land. The the cruelty of this Amara Special Forces is unimaginable. They burned farmers' homes, crop fields, prevented those injured from reaching hospitals, and pulled them out of the emergency vehicle and finished them with additional gunshots. Such attacks against or almost carried out by Somalia special forces under the command under the command of Abdi Ille under the acknowledgement of TPLF officials at the time. In a similar situation, Wallo Oromo's cries for help are repeatedly ignored by federal government and Oromia region's officials. So, Wallo Oromos are calling on all Oromos living abroad and at home to help them with everything they can and save them from ethnic cleansing attempts by heavy equipped Amara forces and the Amara Regional Administration. Be the voice for them and do whatever you can to answer their calls, please. So they are calling on us to help them, to save them from the current crisis. They have been in a similar situation before repeatedly and uh, you know the uh, Oromia uh, regional government and the federal government ignore them. So they are under heavy bombardment under heavy attack, uh, it could be with the acknowledgement of the federal government, uh, not for sure now, but uh, ignoring it is uh, it can imply that it happened during DPLF. Uh, DPLF maybe uh, they thought at the time it is a good strategy to uh, create such chaos by motivating Abi, uh, no, motivating Abdi Ille forces, special forces to attack the Oromos repeatedly. They ignored it, but it burned them at the end. They are not successful. They are in trouble now. In the same situation now, OPDO controls, you know, uh, the federal government and the Amara region is uh, instigating such attacks against the uh, Oromo uh, Wallo Oromos in uh, uh, Amara Special Zone. So they are crying for help. So be the voice. Uh, call, you know, uh, the Ethiopian Embassy. Let them know what they're doing is wrong and uh, what's happening in Wallo is, uh, you know, against human dignity. Uh, they are attempting uh, to. Uh, ethnic cleansing lot in Tigray region so be the voice for them do whatever you can fundraising you know uh, demonstrating whatever you know they call on us to do something 
Heavy fighting reported in uh, uh, Hataye, in North Shore. Uh, according to various media reports, Oromo Liberation Front fighters entered the town and carried out a battle with security forces and took control of one cavalry or district from the government forces. This media also reported the deaths of about 20 people and um, the damage to properties and uh, the looting of the financial institutions. The situation in this area is still tense according to this media. However, the Oromo Liberation Front didn't take responsibility for this operation. Usually, the Amara uh, uses such excuses or oil or shani as they can, as they call them whenever they are planning attack against the Oromos. Uh, PP or the Amaras or the Amara Special Forces, they use Onak Shane as excuse whenever they planning uh, uh, to attack the Oromos in that region, uh, the Olos, the Olo Oromos. So it's a big, it's a huge oppression according to these videos, uh, these different uh, medias. Uh, it's, it's, you know, uh, a day long battle. So. So far, OLF didn't acknowledge this operation, and uh, we don't know, and uh, no independent media, all the Amara medias are talking about this. Uh, President Joe Biden's envoy arrived in Addis Ababa. The United States delegation led by S Senator Chris Coons welcomed by the Mecca McConnell, Ethiopia's Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed decided to hide instead of uh, explaining his so-called so law and order operation in Tigray region to the arriving delegation. So Prime Minister Abiy uh, is, was not present uh, to welcome these uh, uh, US delegations. Uh, you know, he decided to hide, to ignore them. And uh, Senator Chris Coons has has delivered President Biden's message to Mr. Demeka McConnell and had a discussion on the situation in Tigray region and in Ethiopia in general. So far, no press release from the United States on this high delegation visit to this embattled country. So no press release, it could come up later on. Uh, so we are ex we are still waiting what they're gonna say about their visit, what the ultimatum the United States give to Abiy Ahmed and his administration. I hope they will ask him to resign and uh, you know, call for the uh, transitional government in that country. That country is in a mess, in a mess. It's heading to ethnic cleansing. Uh, the danger is coming, it's obvious. So I hope they will call for his resignation, call for uh, dialogue, reconciliation in that country. I hope so. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed uh, warned warned the TPLA fighters and officials to surrender within a week or else. This ultimatum is a joke for the Tigran fighters who are getting strengths in various war fronts, including retaking some towns and the cities from the government forces and to give up on these gains and the surrender to Abiy Ahmed's prosperity. This is a joke. They will not do it. Uh, this ultimatum 
also uh, exposes the prime minister's lies about this war. He told the country and the global communities that the war in Tigray was over without a single casualty and that the government controls every inch of the region. So Prime Minister Abiy, his military officials and uh, politicians, PP politicians, all of them, they say the TPLF is over, is done, the government controls all corners of that region. But this warning, this ultimatum given to TPLF officials and the military officials and uh, fighters uh, is another indication of, you know, uh, lies or desperate attempt by the government to cool down the ongoing war, which they declared is over a long time ago. So they are lying. They are lying and they don't feel ashamed. They don't, you know, uh, they don't feel account accountable for that. Ethiopians, they don't ask them why you lie to us. But the global community is challenging them. But Ethiopians uh, are silent, uh, including the parliament. So, All these statements are lies and the Ethiopians and the global communities must hold him accountable for such misleading statements. According to various media reports, the TPLF resistance movement will end the Amara's uncontrollable celebrations and expansionist agenda soon. According to various media reports, TPLF is getting strength from day to day. They are expanding their oppression deep into the Amara territories. So, PP, plus PP celebrations and the prosperity, uh, I mean prosperity party celebrations plus Amara celebrations will end soon. Too much celebration. Too much celebration. And uh, the ex they are expanding their operations into Oromia region so this all will end uh, their celebration will end their expansions agenda will end and uh, the, their attempt to dominate Ethiopian politics will also end you know we didn't we didn't uh, uh, support the movement to remove TPLF and bring the Amara dominance or the Oromo dominance in that country. We uh, we marched day and night, supported the movement to bring justice in that country and to bring peace and stability in uh, to build that country in dialogue, react, reconciliation without, you know, uh, dominating each other. That was the plan. Now the Amaras are uh, attempting to control the politics of that country, the direction of that country to uh, form unitary party. Okay, the last reading part. Uh, Abiy Ahmed security officials arrested the Oromo Liberation Front's spokesperson for Mr. Dawit Ipsa side. OLF is, as you know, it divided. One is supported by Abi Ahmed and uh, the other is uh, affected by Abi Ahmed. Yes, you know, subjected to so many atrocities, so many abuses by Abi Ahmed. So, two groups. One is supported with everything, financially, security, you know, all including the uh, the help from the election board to get in at this uh, last minute and uh, represent OLF. So Abiyama security forces arrested the OLF spokesperson for uh, Mr. Dawit Ipsa side 
and uh, Mr. Barty Urgesa, his name is Mr. Barty Urgesa, was taken into custody while he was visiting his organization's members in jail. He did such visits in the past without an, without an incident. When he asked the officers why he is being arrested, they told him the order came from higher authorities and they do not know the reasons for such order. Okay. Abi Ahmed. Nobody's higher order. It comes from Abi Ahmed. And he's responsible. Uh, Mr. Bati Urgesa's driver was also arrested with him. Such actions are belittling the Oromo power and their patience for this government. Oromos and others should wake up and challenge this government with forceful rejection of its illegal actions before too late. Arrest warrants must be uh, made before any peaceful citizens are taken into custody in that country. Ethiopians silence is giving Abi Ahmed and his supporters excessive power against the citizens of that country. Uh, concerned citizens media repeatedly calling for peaceful resistance against, against uh, Abiy Ahmed and uh, even call for his resignation because the country is, you know, uh, going in a bad direction, in a very bad direction. People are, you know, uh, getting ready to fight each other. It's already happening in uh, different places. Uh, so, so many indications, so many indications. People are killing each other and uh, no peace and uh, stability in that country. That's why we call uh, the country is a failed state and the leadership is a failed and uh, we call on uh, Abiy Ahmed and his uh, party uh, to give power for the transitional government instead of uh, attempting to run, you know, undemocratic, unfair election and uh, win for the next five years. They will not be successful. They can conduct the election because they got everything. They got uh, the election board, they got the police, they got the military, they got everything, the finance in their hand, so they can conduct whatever they want to do. But that doesn't mean them, that doesn't mean uh, it's going to lead the country into peaceful uh, direction. Uh, dialogue is needed, reconciliation is needed, and a transitional government is needed, not election, not election. Election is not a solution. So. Uh, law and order is broken. No uh, justice in that country. You know, this kind of arrest, when you are visiting a friend or a family member, arresting you is, is a threat, threatening you. You know, and also, uh, you know, uh, an abuse of the, the power and uh, it show you there is no accountability in that country no accountability and uh, they can just put you in jail and uh, they say it's from higher authority How all these higher authorities should supposed to be governed by some kind of uh, constitution the constitution should be you know sh should be the the higher authority but who gonna enforce it? No parlama, no authority. So that is a very serious situation, and uh, the you know the visitation right is damaged here. It's a human right violation in another way, and uh, it's illegal operation, arresting somebody without 
uh, court warrant just grabbing him and put him in jail that's illegal and uh, they will pay a price one day not today today they are in power nobody can challenge them but one day they will pay the price for what they did what they have you know what they have doing they have been doing all these years not only these three years but for the last 27 years these are the same guys i told you before these are opidios they just change the names whether they are the one representing the amaras or the sidamas or the oromos they are all uh, members of tplf created by tplf they just changed the name to mislead you they didn't change their conduct they are the same guys who killed you with tplf who arrested you with tplf who guided tplf to your houses so they are not new i know they, they're gonna win again because no com no competition no competition no lf no oromo uh, federalist congress they are pp uh, or opdo you're gonna vote for them they will intimidate you they will threaten you so that's a tough situation it requires uh, uh, resistance peaceful and uh, armed struggle OLF is doing that the others should also join in a peaceful and uh, armed struggle these people they don't live with election they don't live with other means or by saying down down they don't care so that's the reading part now let's see the share the videos and uh, conclude today's presentation let's see time okay the first one let's see This guy is uh, also follows about uh, Tigray War, Oromia region, uh, East Africa, and different areas. As a voice of reason, he follows. He reports on it. So he got a general analysis what's happening. And, uh, in Ethiopia, listen to him. The general view you will have what's happening in Ethiopia let's listen okay. good day and welcome to another episode of the military and foreign affairs network I'm your host the voice of reason uh, so today in uh, the updated Horn of Africa report um, there is uh, more uh, information coming in uh, about the conflict uh, that is taking place inside of Ethiopia and uh, I have to tell you um, I, uh, I believe that uh, uh, Ethiopia is in some extremely dire straits uh, at this point um, I would uh, go ahead and, and call what is occurring uh, inside of Ethiopia uh, a full scale uh, civil war full-scale um, civil war multiple <laughs> fronts occurring uh, from uh, even external uh, issues such as what is occurring between the Sudan and Ethiopia uh, there's obviously the issue uh, the conflict uh, that is occurring inside of the Tigray region uh, 
which is also seeing external actors such as Eatria uh, enter the fray. And then finally, uh, the conflict uh, with uh, the uh, Oromo Liberation Army and possible other uh, elements uh, of uh, Oromo peoples who are rebelling against uh, the Addis Ababa uh, Prosperity Party-based government. But uh, first off, uh, on the, uh, the Sudanese-Ethiopian border, uh, there continues to be a buildup of uh, Sudanese uh, forces. Uh, now we are re hearing reports that uh, additional uh, paramilitary forces uh, are being brought in specifically. Uh, there appears to be uh, a push uh, that could uh, be getting ready to take place against the town of Brecht. Uh, this is right here on my map. Um, we, uh, we believe that uh, Sudanese forces ha have uh, uh, enveloped Brecht and are just waiting uh, for uh, orders to uh, enter uh, the actual town itself. But uh, we could see uh, much more heavier fighting take place uh, along the uh, Sudan-Ethiopian border. Uh, fighting continues to take place uh, both in the uh, Tigray region uh, and at the same time uh, there is also heavy fighting occurring uh, in the Amhara region where we have seen um, uh, TDF units that have crossed the border and are now operating inside the Amhara region itself. Uh, there is also uh, the ongoing issue uh, with the uh, OLA, the Oromo Liberation Army. Uh, there are now uh, many instances of uh, ambushes and uh, bases uh, being uh, overrun and captured by the Oromo Liberation Army. So I'm going to give you just one uh, report. And this is one report among uh, many uh, instances of conflict that are taking place inside the Oromo uh, region itself. Uh, so in this particular uh, instance, this was an engagement between uh, the uh, Ethiopian army and the Oromo Liberation Army. And in this specific battle, the Ethiopian forces were defeated. And uh, the after uh, battle report uh, has uh, up to uh, 21 uh, Ethiopian army forces uh, killed in action uh, with 15 seriously wounded. Uh, there was also uh, five uh, non-commissioned officers and officers uh, that were also killed and two uh, officers had actually surrendered in this engagement. Uh, the, uh, the equipment obtained after this battle uh, was approximately 15 AKMs, uh, six uh, SVD uh, Drakenhof uh, sniper systems, um, approximately 15 grenades, four medium machine guns, up to 2,000 rounds of ammunition, and uh, an unidentified number of uh, AK-47s were, were also obtained. But again, um, I'm just giving this report because you're not hearing about this in the media, and I think if, if uh, you know, depending on the country that this would have occurred, um, you would have heard more about it, especially when you hear, uh, uh, you know, 21 uh, government forces uh, were killed in action, and uh, this is just one engagement uh, that is taking place between the Ethiopian army and the Oromo Liberation Army itself. And uh, I was also able to obtain uh, video footage of uh, one of these uh, one of these engagements, and you can clearly see uh, the Ethiopian army, uh, the the casualties uh, laying on the ground. Uh, you can see uh, one wounded uh, Ethiopian army personnel who uh, then apparently surrenders and uh, is then. Uh, medically treated uh, by members of the uh, Oromo Liberation Army who proceeds to basically capture him. 
and uh, they they put a compress uh, over one of his uh, over one of his wounds, and, and you can see this. And at the same time, you can also see the the casualties uh, again that have, that have occurred. You uh, one uh, noticeable issue with the Ethiopian army. Obviously, they're they're not wearing um, any uh, form of uh, uh, flak jackets or I anything of the sort. They're not wearing helmets. Um, they they do not appear to be very well equipped. Uh, they are they are very young soldiers, um, and uh, I would say their their military bearing uh, is something that looks like they have uh, just been uh, trained. And, and placed into the field. But again, they, they do not appear to be very uh, well equipped uh, in, in terms of protection uh, that you would see in other, in other armies. Um, and uh, that could be just because of the mass recruitment that is going on inside of Ethiopia right now. They just don't have the ability to supply many of its soldiers uh, with the ne necessary equipment that you would see uh, in some other nations. But uh, that again, that is just uh, one example uh, among many, many, many dozens of examples that are occurring throughout the country, and that is six significant, and that is going to c continue to put pressure on uh, the Ethiopian army. Whereas I have talked about in previous episodes, where you, you would see that at at some point uh, the military simply collapses um, because of all these uh, these attacks and these stressors that are being placed on. Uh, the Ethiopian military, um, and I, I don't envision that uh, it, these sort of actions are going to discontinue. If you look at, uh, if you go in and you look at uh, video footage of uh, Tigrayan uh, towns, and you see the civilian personnel uh, that are talking to the, to the cameras, uh, these people are incredibly upset and angry. And uh, they, uh, there's a reason for that. And I don't anticipate uh, these people are going to lay down their arms and uh, come under the embrace of the uh, Prosperity Party and the Ethiopian government anytime soon. There is a tremendous amount of anger that has built up in this country. Um, and it's just not to gry, it is other areas as well. And uh, when you have that sort of, uh, of, of boiling anger that has kind of overflowed, uh, you see what is occurring now. And uh, normally it lasts for an extended period of time. And uh, this uh, is probably going to last uh, for an extended period of time, uh, even after uh, the Ethiopian army actually collapses, which, again, I, I believe uh, we're probably not too far from that happening. There is an elementary school in Shure that offers some sort of sanctuary, a place of refuge for people on the run. This is a humanitarian crisis in Tigray.